Tell them to go into politics, go in for senate, go in for house of rep. Because you are their father, you are the one feeding them. When you call them behind the scene and say, that law, you're not going to pass them on. It's not going to help this country. Go and lobby your other colleagues. It must not happen. It will cause a shaking. That is very, very effective than declaring seven-day fasting and prayer against Buhari. Bless this conference. Are you hearing me? Buhari is somebody's son. Buhari is representing some interests. So why don't you push your own members there to also in represent the interests of the church? Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. And thank God our current chairman for Nanja State is hearing me. These are the things we need to do. They say Khan will be 45 years in Nigeria and that they are planning something. And then one of them said they are planning a Jesus match. I said, my brother, it's not a match we need. We have been matching before. I said, can you strategize Khan? Can you get a teaching for Khan for the entire state? And be sure the audience are well mobilized. And envision them to get involved in all the major aspects of our life and society, including raising businessmen and women willing to fund the gospel. So the reason they are going into business is the gospel, is not food. Are you getting the difference? And once they have that understanding, all they own belongs to God and to that work. Anybody following me here? Are you getting anything? So it's so important that we look at this contest that these two nature must be there. Because of time, I would just read verse Revelation chapter 5. Let me read quickly from verse 1 to verse... Um, Okay, verse 7 will be fine. I'll quickly read that. And if your Bible is open there, you're going to join me to read certain verses at a point. So please open to Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. I will read verse 1. All of us, using King James Version, we will read verse 2. I will read verse 3. We'll all read 4. In that way to 7. Are we ready? And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, <coughs> written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Verse 2, everybody. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seal thereof? And no man in heaven, none in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Verse 4. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seventh seal thereof. Verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it has been slain, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Verse 7, everybody. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Amen. Few thoughts as I narrow you down to the issue of the lamp. Number one thought is that life is a riddle. Life is a riddle. 
life is coded. Is that okay? Is that okay? Come here, man. Life is coded. Is that okay? Life is full of many secrets. If I ask you, do you know this woman? Do you have any good friend here? You're not a friendly person. Is that the meaning? Where's your pastor? Hmm? Pastor Dari. Where's Pastor Dari? Please come. This is your ship. Your pastor knows you very well. How much of you? Hmm? Very well, like 100%, 100%. Pastor, is this your ship? Do you know her very, very well? 100% for 100%. Like how many percentage? 60. 30? 60. 60. It knows you up to 60%. Are you sure? Do you agree with that assessment? You agree? You know her. Now, what happened to the other 40%? Now, she said um, 60%, sir. So I believe there are things that I don't know about her that I should have known. That she that you know that's why she's saying 60%. So, you see, Shepard is giving, is affirming the report card of the ship. Is that okay? Nobody knows you enough like yourself. If anybody anywhere says, I know this man, I know is a lie. Did you agree? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Nobody. You see somebody smiling to you, but is crying in the inside. Who knows what I'm talking about here? This is about telling you that all is well. Say, brother, how are things? He said, the Lord is on the throne. All is well. We know all the religious language to give an impression we are fine while we are not fine. Do you know that? A lady has no food to eat. Terribly in debt. I was preaching in Zaria, and I've known her many years ago. So I said, and then the Lord said to me, All the money you have on you, give it to this lady to start her life afresh. I said, God, I need this money too. <laughs> That's what I told God. This is a lot of money. I need this money too. I came from Ibadan, and I came with quite a lot of money to buy a few things for my wife and all of that. How can I give everybody to this lady? The lady didn't know what God was telling me. So when I finished preaching, I said, Sister, come. Her name is Grace. I said, Sister, Grace, come. How are you? He said, fine. Everything okay? He said, fine. I said, God, did you hear? She said everything is okay. Why do I give my money to somebody that has everything that's okay? I said, you are sure there is no need, there is no challenge? He said, by the grace of God. I don't know if you have learned all those languages. You use them to cover your struggles, not knowing what God has instructed for your help. So I said, well, Lord, she said, by your grace, she's fine. And the money I have with me is your own grace that also supply it. So let everybody keep their own grace. Abby, she keep living by her grace. I live by my grace. And God said, tell her you are following her home to eat lunch with her. So I said, Sister Grace, I think God wants me to go and know your house. And um, I won't go to the hotel. We're going to your house. And I'm going to eat with you. She said, ha. I said, let's go. So with all my team, and I, I wasn't going alone. So it's a double wahala. If there's one person you are going to feed, you can manage. But now we're coming with a team. 
and we all drove to her house. And then she stood by her door to open. She couldn't open. She turned back and looked at me, and there was tears all over her eyes. She said, I don't know who to tell. Nobody will believe what I'm going through. And they look up to me like a very powerful spiritual sister. Nothing can reduce your chances like a life of pretense. Stop pretending to be who you are not. Because you don't know who God has spoken to to help you. But when you are pretending, the helper will just pass like that. Did you understand? We just pass and that's it. So Wina sat down because she was very emotional. So I sent all the other brethren out. So I sat with her. I said, tell me your true state now. She said for the first time she was going to have courage to say all her struggles, all her pains, all her confusion. Brethren, as we start looking good, we have individual pains all. Yes or no? We are looking for who we can talk with, but somehow we don't trust ourselves enough. Is that right? I, if I tell him my story now, I'll go and hear it on the pulpit. And they'll be using me as example in church. I know they will. After we finished speaking, then I know God was true. So I gave her all the money I have. All. Oh, she almost collapsed. She said, this will pay all my debts. This will give me extra money to do business and live well. She said, thank you. I said, don't thank me. Mom. It was not easy to give you that money. It's a lot of fight between me and God. I'm just obeying God. So don't thank me. Everything you think is free, somebody gave you, someone else paid the price. I said, don't thank me, oh, because as I'm giving you now, I'm in pain. I said, but I'm happy I obeyed God. And God will take care of me. And God did. God gave back to me times seven, whatever I gave her. God doesn't own people. It's your inability to release that is keeping you small. You can't outgive God. Are you hearing me? Anything you can give for the cause of God, that is what will be greater than you. But anything you can give, you will be greater than that thing. Do you understand me? So there was a written code, a seal tied sevenfold, a book. Can I have a book here? <laughs> Thank you. A book was sealed up. Inside this book, is answer to life problems, but is sealed up. Nobody can read it. Did you get it? Sealed up with how many seals? Seven. And the Bible describes. And said, who will be able to open this seal? Because in it is the answer to life riddles. If we can open this seal, we will find solution to many problems in people's lives. But there was nobody found to open the seal. Do you remember that story we read? Nobody found to open the seal. And as the labor, the Bible says, an elder spoke and said, weep not. That is the way we're going to close this leadership conference. God is going to bring an end to our weeping. Yeah. I can hear your amen. Yeah. 
Weep not. Because the angel was helpless. He didn't know what to do. Do you understand that? It must be open. If it's not open, people's life will be on the line. That's why as a leader, may you open the word of God to your people and light and understanding flows into the heart of your members. Are you hearing me? Open the seal. Some of us, when we preach the gospel to our congregation, we preach it from a closed book. They can't understand what you are saying. It's like you are talking in parable. And to increase their confusion, you will start telling them the Greek interpretation, the Aramaic meaning of what you are saying, the Hebrew meaning, and they get more confused. Anybody hearing me here? Somebody is sick. You are telling him the Hebrew meaning of sickness. Is that what he wants? He wants to hear, be healed. Are you hearing me? A wife says, I'm divorcing my husband. I'm packing out. And then they run to pastor. And he says, actually, in the original translation of the word marriage, excuse me, is that what they want to hear? <laughs> original translation of the word marriage, is that what they want to hear? That's like speaking from a closed book. Are you hearing me? As leaders, we must be discerning. We must be what? Discerning. You are to serve food to your members. Serve food to your congregation. Don't serve them the food they cannot eat. Stop serving complicated meals. You do a sorrow and put lizard inside and frog and you are turning it and call it Rema. How? Anybody hearing me here? Make the gospel as simple as possible so that anybody can relate with it. They can gain access to it. I was preaching in Port Harcourt in a very huge major conference and I came up to preach and I said, turn your Bible with me. And as I read the scriptures, I have not, I didn't explain. I just read it. It was like they have never read that same Bible before. Light, understanding, entered the hearts of the people. They started shouting. Fifteen minutes, we can preach. They were just screaming for the understanding that jumped at them just for reading the scripture. While they were shouting, healings, miracles were taking place. People were running to the altar and said, as he read that scripture, this is what happened to me. This is what I, I didn't explain. I just read it. Can I pray for you? Every time you open the word of God, may life flow out of your readings. May this who hear you call you blessed. That the Bible comes so clear, so clean, so impactful to all those who hear you in the name of Jesus. That makes ministry very exciting. He opened the book. Life, light. So there was a cry. Nobody to open the book. And when angels cry, human being better die. He didn't hear me. Do you hear what I'm saying? If a matter is so serious that an angel is crying helplessly, helplessly, crying, nobody can explain the riddles. Listen to me, people. How do you explain this? I knew a couple. Third generation, sir. Third generation. They will have four children. Three will die, remaining one. Second generation, four children, three will die, remaining one. Third, current generation, four children, three will die, remaining one. And then the husband ran to me and said, what is this? 
I say it's a riddle. It's sealed. Except somebody opens it. You saw the riddle God did for Nebuchadnezzar? He had a dream. He forgot the dream. He can't remember the dream. He doesn't even know the interpretation. He said he was so angry. And that's what happened to everybody. When you look at terrain around your life that defies natural explanation. Anybody hearing me here? What you are going through, you can't explain it naturally. And you can't find answer. You become very, very vengeful. So Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm going to kill all of you guys that are called wise men. You are foolish. You are not wise. You can't get my dream. You can't get the meaning of my dream. And this is a very disturbing dream. They couldn't because life was a riddle. Are you hearing me? Your life, my life, is what? It's a riddle. Only God can unlock it. Ministry growth is a riddle. Some are growing, some are not growing. Some that are not growing, the leaders are working harder than even those that their own is growing. That is a riddle that God must unfold in this conference. Are you ready for this? So there are many issues. So when Daniel explained the riddle to Nebuchadnezzar, you know what Nebuchadnezzar did? A king at his status fell on the ground to a slave boy and worshipped him. Any one who can solve people's life riddles, you will attract the unusual blessings of man. Fell on the ground. Said, do oblations to him. Burn incense to him. Now before that time, they call him a slave boy. Sir, when God uses it to solve human riddles, nobody can call you a slave boy. Nobody. People will look at you with honor, with dignity, with respect. <laughs> this year, around May, May this year, I got a telephone call. We're going to preach somewhere. And my phone rang. And here's one of our sons. He said, ah, daddy. I, I said, are you in Nigeria? I said, yes. He said, I came in not long ago. I said, oh, that's great. What are you doing? He said, I came to see you. I said, you can't see me. I'm on my way for a meeting. He said, but I have to talk with you. I said, what is the matter? Hear this story. This is life. This is May this year. He said, I was thinking. And I knew all the challenges around my life. And I knew how God used you to solve the riddles and the confusion in my life. I want to say thank you by doing something God asked me to do. This guy owns a mini estate in Lagos, inside Lagos, by the road, with more than seven buildings in that estate, fully occupied, he said, the Lord said, I should give it to you. It's yours. I have all the documents. Send your lawyers and my own lawyer and let them check it and do the new agreement and be sure they can get you to sign. And what of you? I said, what? I said, go and think again. Go and think again and come back. He said, no, sir. I flew into this country just to do that. And then we went, we went there with our legal teams and our estate value team, all of them. We all went there and look at the people just by the road. The road is tired. Everything is fine. What? I stood in front of him and said, so boy, this is how to become owner of an estate without buying land not buying block, not buying cement, not looking for laborers to pay, not doing anything, just by solving somebody's riddle. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Just by ending somebody's confusion. So when the Bible says the king Nebuchadnezzar made Daniel 
a great man, gave him great gift, and brought him to be his advisor. And even Daniel says, make space for my friends. He gives them portfolios also. It is the benefit of serving live readers. Are you hearing me? If I tell you something that has happened to me this year, it will blow your mind. This is just the list of them I just told you. Strange supply line. When we say there is COVID, there is nothing is working, blah, blah, blah. Me, I'm not stranded. Just solve people's riddles. There is a payback day. Don't solve it and sit there and say, you don't see me. No. Solve it and walk away. One day will come. The person says, ah, ah, this man, we didn't have a child before. We tried medicine. We tried traditional. We tried everything. It didn't work. We met this man of God. And one prayer, the redo was solved. And we get pregnant. See, the boy now is tall. We have not done anything to this man. Let's go to him. That's the way it works. Don't force people to give you things. Let your impact in their life compel them to do you good. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Don't do gimmicks. Don't do anything. Don't manipulate. Don't say God told you those who can give her 1,000 naira, they will make heaven. Don't say that. Don't say you just came from Jerusalem and this water, you got it from River Jordan and it's 10,000 10, power, small, small bottle. Don't do that. This is mine. I don't know if you agree with that. Solve life riddles. So nobody was found. And then the angels, the elder says, whip not. But that's not where I'm going. I'm going to go. In I've talked about the lion. Verse 6 says, we saw. They were describing that lion. And then suddenly, we saw the same lion. And verse 6, give me verse 6. And I beheld. You know the word beheld is like looking and looking. What was he looking? He was looking at verse 5. The lion of the tribe come here, sir. Let's beheld this great man. We're just looking at him as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And as we... 